Good morning, my friends, and thank you for joining me for Facebook Live. Today is Thursday, which means it's toward the end of the week. It's my last day in the office. <clears throat> well, I mean, I have Friday off, but uh, I'll still be with you tomorrow morning for our daily devotion. And then Saturday, we have a uh, celebration of life service here at the church. And then Sunday, I've been asked to be a guest speaker at a church. So I'm going to be preaching Sunday morning uh, from another church. Now, I still want you to tune in to Park Place. Uh, the Sunday sermon that you're going to hear online is actually recorded on Wednesday. So the sermon that you're going to get this Sunday online was recorded yesterday. Good morning, guys. I see your names there, Diana and Mary. I think I saw Pam's name there. Uh, thank you for joining me. And Jenny, thank you for joining me. It's good to see you guys. Another Pam, both Pams. And Shelly, thank you for joining me again, Shelly. It's good to see you guys. How are you? Sheila's with us. Michelle, good to see you, Michelle. Well, I'm not wearing my priestly collar today, and it wasn't a priestly collar anyway. It was just a fun shirt that I found and liked. It uh, was nothing against the uh, Catholic priest, of course. No disrespect intended. Anyway, guys, today we are going to be talking about the year of Jubilee. What do you know about the year of Jubilee? Well, we know it's from the Old Testament. <clears throat> we know that it was good because it says Jubilee, right? So Jubilee is good. Um, let's find out what the word Jubilee actually means. Because it's a wonderful word. It's a special anniversary or an event, especially one celebrating 25 or 50 years of a reign or activity. Now, that's not what it means in the Bible. So today we're going to be talking about what it means in the Bible. It's true that it's an anniversary event. And it happened every once in a while, but the year of Jubilee uh, was something that God institute, instituted or installed for the Israelites, and it was a year that they could look forward to. So we're going to unpack that today. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. And the year of Jubilee, a great year in which uh, all of God's people got together and celebrated <clears throat> and did some wonderful things together. I hope that uh, we reach 20 people. We've got 15 so far. We were as high as 18. I always start when we have 20. So let's get a couple more people on here. Hope you guys are doing well, staying safe. Florida's been hot here lately. Good morning, Lynn. I see some of your other names there. And Marty Lewis and Larry has joined us. Thank you, guys. Good morning to you. Good morning, Hillary. Thank you for joining us. I want to thank Bernadette for coming in yesterday. And bringing me my cough drops. What do you call them? Ricola? She can put my name on it. See here? It says Pastor John. And they're honey. Her I do my daily devotions at 11. So I spoke at 11. I preached my sermon at 2, which you'll hear on Sunday. And then last night, if you joined us for Bible study, um, we did a Bible study on basically the origin of man. This was at 6 p.m., and it was on Facebook Live, and I think I posted it to my page, so you can still see it. It's also on the Park Place website, or Park Place Facebook page. So I did my morning devotion, my sermon at 2, and then finally I did a Bible study, which lasted an hour, and took some of your questions. And I did have some tough questions, by the way. I want to thank you guys for, you know, sharing your comments and questions, because I really want that to be interactive as much as we possibly can. All right, my friends, it is time to talk about the year of Jubilee. Esther, you probably know all about this. You and John spent a lot of time in the synagogue. Um, what is the year of Jubilee? Why is it important? How is it related to Jesus' first message or even Jesus' ministry? Those are good questions. And why don't we practice the year of Jubilee anymore? Because we do, in a way, some people do. Now, in the Bible, the year of Jubilee occurs after seven sets of seven yearly intervals. Okay, seven is uh, what people consider to be the Lord's number. Okay, so 
seven sets of seven yearly intervals would be 49. We know that. And after they're completed. <clears throat> However, we're going to be talking about the number 49. We're going to be talking about the year 7. We're going to be talking about the year 15th. Because the 15th, or quote-unquote liberty, year is proclaimed on one of God's annual feast days known as the Day of Atonement. So, a lot of you didn't know this, but the year of Jubilee and the Day of Atonement are actually directly related, as far as my research is concerned. Don't claim to be an expert in Old Testament. I took a few classes in Bible college, of course, on Old Testament. I'm going to have some more classes in my new doctorate program, uh, which I start next month on Old Testament. So I'm going to be learning as much as I can. But let's remember some simple things, and then we're going to get into the Word of God. God owns everything. So everything we have is really God's. If we are Christians and we have given our life to Christ, He has our heart, He has our body, He has our mind, He has all of our possessions. We are His. Okay? So keep that as a foundational truth as we begin to understand the year of Jubilee. Because God owns everything, he sets up a special, regularly occurring time period called Jubilee, when a man's possessions would be returned to him. <clears throat> now, the 15th year is sacred in the Old Testament. It is a time of freedom and of celebration when everyone will receive back their original property. Okay? But if you're wondering about what I mean by that, where did their property go? Listen to this. Slaves will return home to their families. If one of your brothers becomes indignant and has to sell himself to you, don't make him work as a slave. Treat him as a hired hand instead of a slave or a guest among you. He will work for you until the Jubilee. Okay? So, God does not promote uh, slavery. Remember, it was God's people that were rescued from slavery from the Egyptians. Good morning, Pastor Dan. Thank you for chiming in. Good to see you, my friend. We're talking about the year of Jubilee. <clears throat> God detests slavery. So, uh, we are not saying that God advocates slavery here. If somebody had to sell themselves, okay, to pay off a debt, which was common in Old Testament practice, the Bible says that they were to be treated not as a slave, but as a guest among you. Let's take a look at Leviticus. If you have your Bible and you want to turn with me to Leviticus chapter 25, that's where it talks about the year of Jubilee. <clears throat> and I'm going to look at verse 8 to begin with. So Leviticus chapter 25, I'll give you a quick minute to get there. We're going to look at verse 8, and then we're going to close by talking about how we can practice the year of Jubilee, even in the New Testament, even today. It should be practiced. In fact, our country has practiced it, and I'm going to give you some examples of that as well. So, so much of what happened in the Old Testament is really kind of interwoven into our culture today. It's, a, it's, it's wonderful. So, Leviticus 25, verse 8 says this, Count off seven Sabbath years, seven times seven years, okay, that's where we get the 49, so that the seven Sabbath years amount to a period of 49 years. Verse 9. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement. Sound the trumpet throughout your land. <clears throat> Verse 10. Consecrate the fifteenth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Each of you is to return to your family property and to your own clan. Verse 11. The fifteenth year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow, do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the unintended vines. For it is a jubilee and is to be holy for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the fields, okay? Now, we're going to talk about that, but let's scoot down a little bit further to verse 39 and 40, <clears throat> and it says this, 
If any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to you as slaves, they are to be tr treated as hired workers or temporary residents among you. They are to work for you until the year of Jubilee. Okay? So, <clears throat> it does make reference to slavery, but God is helping the Israelites to understand that slavery is not the slavery that they knew or, you know, uh, of abuse. Slavery is not to be abusive. It is not direct ownership, okay? He says that they will work for you. They are to be treated like a hired worker or temporary resident among you. I love that. Israel was also commanded in the Bible to redeem tithes and offerings based on how long it was to the next Jubilee period. And we find this from Leviticus chapter 27. <clears throat> Basically, the chapter that is in Leviticus of 27 talks about those that are setting aside what? First fruits, tithes and offerings given back to the Lord. There's something, there's something to be said about those of us that have uh, great means or even just little means, but that we set aside and give first fruits. So that's, we give it first. We give the best of what we have. If you were to bring in a harvest <clears throat> of, say, green beans, and you are picking the good from the bad, you are taking the good to be sold and the bad nobody wants, or maybe you can give that to your livestock or whatever, perhaps. But the good beans you put together, now you take a tenth of that which is good, okay? And you give it to the Lord as first fruits, okay? That's what the Bible refers to as your tithe, okay? It's off the top, my friends. You don't get to go to the marketplace with your best, <clears throat> hope to sell it all, and then at the end say, well, this is what I'm left with. So I'll just go ahead and give what's left to the Lord. That's not what he's talking about here. So there's something to be said about giving God your best. And slavery is something that God detests. However, it is a common practice in the Old Testament to go ahead and to offer your services to pay off a debt. And sometimes that's referred to as slavery, but oftentimes slavery has a very negative connotation. And so God is redefining the word slavery to say maybe a hired hand is a better way to describe that. Not abusive. Uh, not in a way as to look at somebody as property of owning them, not at all, but a hired hand that works off a debt, okay? Common practice in the Old Testament. Leviticus 26 states the reason <clears throat> ancient Israel went into captivity was not for allowing the land to rest every seven years. Listen, God is telling them every seven years you are to let the land heal, rest. And when they did not do that, we find out in Leviticus chapter 26, what happened? They went into captivity. By not giving it a break, that is their land, and letting it enjoy its own Sabbath rest. What does that tell you? That if we do not honor the Sabbath and keep it holy, if we do not honor God's word and keep it holy, God will bring calamity, difficulty, maybe even destruction on us, my friends. I believe we are all having a covering over us, a protection. As long as we are in the will of God, <clears throat> we are following his statutes for our life his rules, his regulations for our lives because he knows what is best for us. When we don't do that, we break. We break that covenant. That is why in Leviticus 26, 
They are brought into captivity because they weren't honoring the land that God gave them. Every seven years, they were supposed to let it rest. Just let it sit dormant. Now, I'm going to read on a little bit more. Scripture states, If in spite of this you still do not listen to me but continue to be hostile toward me, then in my anger, God says, I will be hostile toward you. I will scatter you among the nations. Your land will be laid waste. Where do you get that, Pastor? Leviticus 26, verses 27 and 28 and 33. Okay? It's very important that you understand that God doesn't play with us, my friends. God doesn't play. When he says this is a, a season in your life that you are supposed to do something uncharacteristic, like let your land stay dormant, stay free. You are not supposed to plant, harvest, nothing. Let the land rest. God isn't so much concerned about the land as he is about our obedience. That's the problem that we're having in churches today, my friends. It's not so much the law of God. The law of God doesn't change necessarily. What God wants, God's going to get. But he is more concerned with us being obedient and honest and faithful. Good morning, Michael. Thank you for joining me. We're talking about the year of Jubilee. When we are faithful with what God has entrusted to us, who earned the land? You didn't earn the land. It's not yours. It's God's. Remember when I began, when I started, I said, everything we have is God's. Your house, your land, everything is, is you're simply a steward of what God has entrusted to you. And God is saying to his people, every seven years, <clears throat> do not plant, do not receive a harvest. Let it just be. You need to plan in advance for that seven year rest. Okay, you need to store away. Yes, you need to be prepared. Okay, but then let it rest. And if you don't, guess what? I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it because it's mine. I love that. I tell you what, God doesn't play, my friends. If we are not faithful to him, <clears throat> he will take it back. I don't know if that concerns you at all. Every dollar I make whether it's from the church or personal investments, it makes no difference. Every dollar is his, and I'm very thankful for it, and I have to tithe on it. Now, let's talk about our country a little bit. <clears throat> um, in a minute, we're going to talk about that, but listen to this first. This is really cool. Jesus, near the start of his public ministry, quoted a section of scripture related to Jubilee. I love this. He stated, this is what he said, and you know this scripture, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For this reason, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to send forth in deliverance those who have been crushed, to proclaim the accept, acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord was known as the year of Jubilee. Jesus was quoting from Isaiah 61, verse 1 and verse 2. Let's go over there. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. <clears throat> Excuse me, Isaiah 61, and then we're going to talk about our country. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. There's a couple words there that I want to mention to you. Liberty is one of them. Uh, I want to mention that. And I also want to talk about proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Favor. That is the year of Jubilee, my friends. Okay? Now let's talk about our country. <clears throat> the Liberty Bell. You all remember studying the Liberty Bell in elementary school? It was initially cast in 1752 A.D., now in Philadelphia. We know that. This is an iconic symbol of American independence. The bell's first inscribed line 
quotes part of the verse found in the King James Version Bible of Leviticus 25.10, which mentions the Jubilee. If I've talked to you already about liberty, and they call it the Liberty Bell, and they're referencing literally with an inscription on the Liberty Bell, the year of Jubilee, that is their freedom, their independence, my friends. I don't know about you, but I found that really, really interesting. Sometimes there's history that I just really get into. My father loved history. I really like history. I don't love it like he did, but I really, I really like it. The bell rang on July 8th, 1776, to summon the people to hear the Declaration of Independence. Listen to this. Unfortunately, the United States has not obeyed the Jubilee Law. It is widely believed the bell received its crack in 1835 AD. And it happened while it was being rung. The crack, which occurred roughly 50 years after America's War of Independence ended in 1783, was so severe to cause the bell to never ring again. So what does that tell you about the year of Jubilee? That it needs to be observed, my friends, and that liberty and the year of Jubilee and resting on the Sabbath are all directly related. It is independence, my friends. It is acknowledgement to who God is and what he is doing in our lives. I know this is an interesting teaching. It's not what you're used to, but I found it really cool. Now, Josephus is one of my favorite writers, okay? You have heard me preach on Josephus. No, he didn't write in the Bible, so I don't preach it as scripture. But Josephus was a biblical historian, and he was around in biblical times, uh, Jesus' times. I don't know when he began writing, and I don't know when he ended writing. I don't know the years of his life. But there is great authority in Josephus' historical writings. Josephus, in his monumental work of the history of the Jewish people, discusses historical events that he felt occurred during Jubilee years, okay? Uh, in Herod the Great's 13th year of rule, <clears throat> there was famine and a corresponding pestilence, okay? The worst since the time of King Ahab. Josephus states it occurred in a year of Jubilee, my friends. Coincidence? I think not. I think not. I think if they're not going to obey the year of Jubilee, if God gave them the year of Jubilee. God instructed them, mandated them to observe the year of Jubilee. If they're not going to do it, God is going to take from them. I've already read that scripture to you, my friends. Every dollar, every possession, every thought is captive to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not your own. You are bought at a price. That means that literally you are his. And so that's why the tithe is important. The year of Jubilee is important. The day of Sabbath is important. <clears throat> it's a day of rest, my friends. It's the seventh day. I mean, seven is the Lord's number. There's something to be said about the seventh year. Seven times seven, 49th year. There's something to be said about all of this that we're talking about today. Now, the designating of every 50th year as Jubilee is not just for allowing the land to rest. It's a reminder, just like the weekly seventh day Sabbath, that God has created everything. It is also a reminder that humans are not the only owners of the land, but they are stewards of it and are not to hold on to property forever. Because we are thankful to God for liberating us, we should also liberate others from debts to us. I can tell you what, when I first came to this church, my friends, <clears throat> I am probably probably shouldn't say this, but there were a couple people that I was told that owed a debt to the church. The church gave loans. 
the first thing we did, the first thing I said to the board is the church doesn't give loans, we give gifts. And we are going to absolutely dissolve this. Um, consider it Jubilee, a year of Jubilee. We do not hold debts as a church. And I'm not saying that maybe you're not in debt. You may, be have, you may have debts. So go ahead and call your credit card company and tell them it's the year of Jubilee if you'd like to. They, they're not going to accept it. I know they're not going to accept it. But we as Christians with one another need to practice Jubilee. Not hold each other accountable, okay? But let God, who has given us favor, help us to extend favor to other people. Who owes you money? Who owes you something? Have you considered letting them enjoy Jubilee, my friends? I hope you do. <clears throat> I hope you consider that. Anyway, um, I know that you're, you know, the people that you owe money to probably won't enjoy that. Um, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Anyway, any nation would receive a tremendous blessing if they observed the Jubilee. People would not ring up huge debt and there would be no great imbalance between the wealthy and the poor. The value of land would stabilize and the usual giant ups and downs of the economy would not happen. God's laws would be taught every seventh year. Sadly, we will have to hold on until the millennial reign of Christ Jesus before the world is willing to obey him. Now, unfortunately, our world and our society doesn't practice this, but we as Christians need to practice this. So I want to ask you, my friends, are you honoring the Sabbath or are you out there making another dollar or two? Now, for me, my Sabbath isn't Sunday. I told you I'm preaching this Sunday. I've been a guest speaker at another church. Okay, if you want to know where I'm speaking, uh, you can reach out to me. If you want to go, that's fine. I don't care if you do. They aren't closed. We, we are practicing social distancing. Um, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a small church. I believe it's in Palm Harbor. But if you want to go and hear me preach, that'd be fine. But it doesn't make a difference. Sunday is not my Sabbath. Ooh, that sounds sacrilegious. Um... Does it sound sacrilegious to you? Sunday may be your Sabbath. If you're a nurse and you have to work Sunday, what are you to do? Are you disobeying the Lord's Sabbath? No, you're not. Sabbath, let's talk about not the, the letter of the law, but the intent of the law. The intent was a day of rest. And the Jews practiced Saturday as their Sabbath, didn't they? We Christians practice Sunday as our Sabbath. And for most people, they have Sunday off. But that's not true in my case. I'm preaching Sunday. I'm going to be with other people. I'm going to have lunch and, and minister on, on Sunday. And, and sometimes I come into the office on Sunday um, and, and prepare sermons for next for next for uh, uh, ne the next week. Sunday is not my day off. Friday is. Now, I have a responsibility to protect Friday. It is my day of Jubilee. How about that? It is my day of Sabbath. Okay? So why is the year of Jubilee important? It is because it offers us a warning to the modern day children of Israel not to commit the same mistakes their ancestors did in the Bible. You see, the problem with the Sabbath and disobeying the Sabbath. Good morning, Matt. Thank you for joining me, brother. I'll see you Saturday. I'm looking forward to it. The problem is, is that they know they have to honor the Sabbath. Whatever Sabbath day of the week you deem appropriate for you, if you do not honor that day, you dishonor God. If you do not honor your Sabbath day, you are dishonoring God because it's in the Ten Commandments to honor that day and keep it holy, my friends. So it's up to you. It's a personal decision, and I can't make it for you. And I just want to remind you that the Sabbath needs to be kept holy. The year of Jubilee in which all debts are canceled. It's why oftentimes, um, you know, if you claim foreclosure or um, I guess bankruptcy, there's oftentimes seven years of penalty. 
But after that, it's expunged, usually from your record, I think. I don't know. Maybe it's taken off your credit report. Um, that's where that came from. It's the year of Jubilee, my friends. So the year of Jubilee in the Old Testament is very important. And so is tithing. And so is giving God everything we have. When they had their land and they let it rest, that was their way of honoring God. And so we honor God in so many different ways, my friends. And then finally, <clears throat> our Sabbath has to be protected. If you're out there working on your Sabbath, I, let, me, let me just warn you. The Lord will take from you. <clears throat> he will take it away, my friends. If you do not honor the Sabbath as he instructs us to honor it, he can take it, that which you've worked for, that which you think you deserve, that which you think you're owed, that which you think you will um, receive. God has other ways of taking it. When I have not honored the Sabbath in different times in my life, my car breaks down, an appliance breaks. Sometimes my, you know, um, I, I lose my wallet. I, I can testify that I want to honor the Sabbath, but there's been times in my life I just haven't done it. And guess what? God is God. And everything I have is His. If you honor the Sabbath and you pay your tithe, He will make the 90% that you keep go further than the 100, my friends. I hope that makes sense to you. I'm not. I'm not saying that you need to Start tithing if you're not. That's between you and the Lord. The beautiful thing about being the pastor of Park Place Church is when I came here, they asked me if I wanted to know who tithed and how much. Yes, we get holes in our pockets and we lose our money, Mary. You're right. I said, I don't want to know. <clears throat> some pastors, some of my predecessors, they wanted to know who was tithing and how much. It's a pastor's prerogative. So if you're tithing 100 a week or 1,000 a week, I don't know. It makes no difference to me because I don't know. The fact that I don't know gives me a lot of freedom to be able to share with you that tithing is important. It's important that you know that I tithe, not 10%. I tithe more than that. How much I tithe is between me and the Lord. But I think that it's important for all of us to be good stewards of that which God has given us. And if we're not, He's just going to blow it all away. He'll blow it all away. It'll be gone, my friends. No worries, Sherry. I'm glad you're here. You can catch this on my Facebook page from the beginning to the end. I'm going to repost it. We talked about the year of Jubilee. We talked about um, the tithes and the offerings and trusting 10%. When they laid their land and let it be dormant for one full year, that was their offering to the Lord because they were in obedience. That's how I share the year of Jubilee with our tithe and our Sabbath. Those three things are closely linked. The year of Jubilee, the tithe, and the Sabbath are all mandated by the Lord. So when preachers talk about tithing, they're only doing what God has put on their heart to, to teach, to talk about, because it's in God's word. So be a good tither. But even more important than that, respect and honor all of God's laws. I mean, if, if you go out there and live like the rest of the world and tithe on Sunday, what does that mean? Does that really mean anything? If you go out there, get drunk, do drugs, act stupid, uh, fool around, uh, you know, uh, break the law, view pornography, um, speed, tell white lies, all these things, all these sins, uh, covet something that isn't yours, jealous, become bitter in your spirit, unforgiving, but you tithe? Do you think that pleases the Lord? God wants you to be perfect. He says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. That means be righteous. So let me pray with you uh, this morning, my friends. Father, I thank you for this uh, simple, interesting lesson about the year of Jubilee. We celebrate the year of Jubilee, and we celebrate your Sabbath, and we celebrate the fact that everything we have is yours. And everything we receive is from the hand of God. We thank you for it. And thank you for the little lesson on history, Jewish culture. I hope I did justice to it. 
I'm still learning. But God, help us to be faithful to protect all of your laws, all the things that you would have us to uh, protect, including every dollar that comes in. Let us give you our first fruits. Let us decide what day of the week will be our Sabbath and do no work and rest and do that which uh, we enjoy. Let us be outside. Let us go bicycling. Let us spend time with our family. Let us go for walks. Let us take naps. Let us um, watch movies and play board games with our family and not worry about work. That's what the Sabbath is for. I thank you, Jesus, that you remind us that there is a time to forgive debts and there's a time to uh, let the land rest and there's a time just to be with our families and be in a spirit of rest. Help us to do that. Somebody needed to hear this today. And I thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Be encouraged, my friends. I love you. I thank you for listening. I will be with you tomorrow morning. Today's Thursday, so I'm off tomorrow. And yes, tomorrow is my Sabbath. I still teach from 11 to 11.30, but let me tell you something. I don't do any research, or typically I don't do any research. My Friday mornings are more of a simple devotion, and I don't consider that work. So every day when I sit with Dina, <clears throat> or used to, sometimes we do it in our devotions on Facebook Live now, we would read a passage of scripture, and I would expound on it. It's the same thing I'm doing with you. So tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., I will be just sharing with you my daily devotion. The only difference is, I put you on Facebook Live so I can share my daily devotion with all of you. So be encouraged. I love you guys. Thank you for calling me to be your pastor. Uh, be a blessing to someone today. Have a great day, my friends.